now to our breaking news story. Major rescue efforts underway to save a miner trapped underground following a mine collapse in regional Victoria. A second worker who suffered injuries was flown to hospital last night and is currently fighting for life. Joining us for more is Arnold Dix, the Victorian engineer who brought 41 Indian miners back to safety in November of last year. Who could forget that? Mm. But Arnold, um, good morning to you. Um, look, can you give us an idea on the complexities of, of this rescue operation? Yeah, well, here, here we go again. Um, it's, of course, incredibly dangerous situation when you've got a collapse underground. Uh, as you know, you've got one miner fighting for his life now after receiving the, uh, the injuries overnight or yesterday afternoon. And of course, one man still trapped there. I, uh, these are in incredibly difficult conditions to be working in. Uh, there's, of course, there's been the collapse. The actual mine itself is, is blocked. Uh, thankfully, 25 workers have been lifted um, out through a ventilation shaft, so that's uh, 26 of 27 out, uh, but certainly with one man still trapped, you know, this is a yeah, very, very serious situation. And the area that they're trapped in, uh, this type of mining operation, is uh, in a, what's known as a, a fault zone, uh, similar in some ways to what we were dealing with up in the Himalayas. And, uh, I mean, rescuers will be literally, um, again, going millimetre by millimetre, again, making sure they don't trigger a collapse, again, um, making sure they're safe and, of course, getting that last uh, miner out alive. Um, very difficult, very difficult task. I mean, Arnold, give us a sense of what it's like underground in those tunnels. You know, we're talking 500 metres underground. We've got falling rocks. You know this environment better than most. This is going to be challenging. And then I guess it raises concerns about why they were under there in these kinds of circumstances. No, no, I, I think mining, mining's mining. And so if you, if you want a gold necklace, if you want a gold ring, if you want, you want jewellery, uh, if you want electronics, we have to do mining. And mining has always some risk. Uh, and that's what we're, we're seeing here. Thankfully, we're in Australia and our mining, our mines are incredibly safe by, by world standards, but but it's still mining and it's still underground. And at 500 metres underground, the, the forces of the... You know, you've got five, 500 metres of mountain, or in this case, rock above you, you're under Ballarat. Um, there's a, lo a lot going on, and that's why you, you'll see there's reference to the geotechnical engineers, the, the geophysicists. They'll be down there doing the calculations to make sure as they do the rescue, as they're removing... Um, some of the rock that's fallen, they don't trigger a further collapse. Uh, and, and that's to protect, the, of course, the person who's trapped and also also themselves. Uh, and this is this, this balancing thing again. Um, look, they may, they may not even know. I mean, given those circumstances you're outlining um, and how painstakingly slow it's going to go, uh, they may not know uh, exactly the status of the miner uh, who is trapped at the moment. All that is incredibly difficult. Is it possible to put a time frame yep. on it? What, what would conditions be like, no. uh, just from a breathing perspective? No. Yeah, so um, time frames, absolutely no. You can't put a time frame on it. Uh, in terms of the circumstances the, the last trap miner finds themselves in, we don't know exactly what's around them. Um, they, they might be trapped. You know, it might be their ankle that's trapped, and that might be all, but... Uh, if if the collapse has gone around them, then you don't want to disturb the rock mass at all because your ability to, to breathe, of course, is dependent upon uh, the pressure that you're under. So it's, it's, it's like microsurgery they're doing at the moment to get this man out. Now, the, the good news is that of all the countries and all the places for this to happen, we are some of the... Well, us and the South Africans, the best miners, um, the best rescue teams, the best emergency services. So I'm, I'm confident that whatever can be done uh, will be being done. And uh, that's, yeah, it's, but this is serious. Like this, it, it, it's, yeah. it's the same, it's the same story again. Okay. Uh, and they're very, 
very difficult. Uh, we appreciate um, you shedding some light um, on this difficult story. Um, and look, there are a couple of families out there who are really doing it tough this morning. Our thoughts are with them. Let's get straight to that breaking news as we come on air with the incredibly delicate rescue effort underway to free a miner trapped hundreds of metres underground in Victoria. This emergency began at 10 to 5 yesterday afternoon when police were called to Ballarat Gold Mine after reports of a rock fall. 29 miners managed to escape in a safety pod. Two, however, were trapped by falling rocks. By 7pm, one of those men had been freed and flown to hospital in Melbourne. As of this morning, one miner is still trapped. Rescuers right now working out how to get him out. Our Today Melbourne team is live at that mine and the Alfred Hospital. Let's begin with Christina Hearn in Ballarat. Chris, it's a very delicate rescue operation. Yeah, it certainly is, Sarah, and we know that this operation has been going for more than 13 hours. What I can tell you is that this trapped man is located about 500 metres underground and three kilometres from the mine entrance. What workers are trying to do at the moment is actually stabilise the area after this rockfall to make it safe for emergency workers to actually get to this trapped miner. We don't know any injuries he might have sustained. We don't know any kind of condition that he might be in, but we do know that oxygen levels are not a concern at this stage and that there are about 30 emergency workers uh, right now trying to free this trapped miner here at the Ballarat Gold Mine. As well as the second miner that was injured and transferred to hospital, we know that there were 29 other miners at the time of this rock fall. They were safely extracted. They were seen by paramedics and thankfully none of them sustained any injuries. But of course, the fate of this trapped miner is just unknown at this stage stage. Here is Victoria Police speaking late last night. I can't comment um, on the intricacies of um, any uh, particulars around where he is because the rescue teams are working to uh, reach him safely uh, so that an assessment of the medical condition of that person can be undertaken. This mine does have a bit of a chequered history. In 2007, 27 miners had to be rescued after a cave-in. Uh, at the moment, the Ballarat Gold Mine, uh, which employs about 200 people, is run by Victory Minerals. We are yet to hear from the owners. Sarah? Chris, thank you. Let's turn to Isabella Staszkowski now at the Alfred. Isa, the rescue man, is in a serious condition. He certainly is, Carl. We know that specialist Micah and ALS paramedics were working with teams on the ground last night to try and stabilise him and to get him out of that mine. He was then airlifted all the way from that area near Ballarat here to the Alfred in the city. That happened in the evening and since then he's been in a critical condition. He suffered some pretty serious injuries to his leg. They are life-threatening. The teams are doing everything they can here, of course, at the Alfred. Such a delicate process. Our thoughts are with the teams here and with that man's family. Yes, that is a thank you. Hey there today, fans. Sarah and... <laughs> What's my name again? Oh my God. <laughs> Carl. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube <laughs> channel, though. Subscribe now for more news, special reports and amazing Aussie stories. And Carl misbehaving, Whoa, of course. That never happens. Always happens. What's she talking about?